Okay, so I'm now recording. And all right, so this is the uh, December Sage Circulation Committee meeting. Um, this one had to be pushed up a little bit due to the holidays. Joyce, your microphone is not working. Um, you seem to be, you've muted your microphone there, Joyce. I can see it uh, right next to your um, to your icon there. Oh, there you are. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Yes. Let me have more uh, from Pendleton as well. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so so for the today's circulation committee meeting, it's kind of just a revision of what we had spoken about on the 22nd earlier um, with some updates as well. Um, so the, the next circulation committee meeting, we kind of try to do it on the second or third uh, Tuesday of the month. Um, and so this one would kind of fall on the 17th of January if people are available then. That would be the third uh, Tuesday in January. Just kind of see if there's any issues with that. There doesn't seem to be any issues with that. So I think, barring anything, uh, Tuesday the 17th will be the next um, circulation committee meeting. And that should be uh, interesting because um, we will be getting near the upgrade time for Evergreen, or it'll already have happened. So, okay. So just kind of to go over some previous updates from the last meeting um, with the upgrade that is still slated to happen. Um, that will be, um, let's put it into the update I had on the systems post. So that will be on January 15th. Um, and you can kind of go through if you're curious, I've been weekly um, updating the systems update that also mentions some things here in the meeting. So January 15th, for example, will be the date um, of that upgrade if you're still um, curious about that. So this will be, the CERC meeting will be right after more or less that update. So. I think it'll go pretty smoothly. Uh, the test server's been running pretty smooth. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. There's been some bugs worked out with SIP, which are gonna be great. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that, uh, getting that done. Okay, so we, on uh, I think last Monday, I also talked a little bit in the cataloging committee meeting um, about Z3950. Um, and I think the basic kind of what we came away with was to keep the settings as they are, uh, including the additional Z3950 servers, um, but to start looking at how things are being brought in. Um, and I'm going to keep a log of the records that come in new with um, malformed characters, which are something we can't get away from. On those two sources that are the most used, like Prospector, and main cat, but um, uh, yeah, we're kind of just in a holding pattern with that. But I think the best thing right now is to just be aware of those possible errors that can happen and to correct them before bringing in the record. Um, that's mentioned in the systems update as well, um, which you can see just by logging in as cataloging or logging in as uh, staff, and you should see it in the recent. Uh, blog post column. And 
so something we still need to do is um, firm up the lost in transit policy. Uh, I'll be talking with Perry about that. Um, people have been a little uh, kind of hard to reach just because of the holidays, but uh, I think this will probably be getting better by the time of the next meeting. Um, yep, and then past that was just the current status of the advanced search filter populating uh, bug, which has been getting more heat, but um, there's still nothing that's been done uh, substantially on that, um, but I'm watching it um, to make sure that things will get added when they do get changed. Um, yep, we'll have more information about that upgrade when that happens, um, probably in the coming weeks here. Um, it's more or less ready to go, and I don't imagine it will take us very much time. So it should be, the email will be mostly about using standalone for those libraries that have wanted to use, um, it'll be on a Sunday, but if they're going to be open about how to use the standalone um, version of the staff client for transactions. And, and what we kind of, I think would be good to discuss here would be um, kind of what is to be done about handling new accounts when multiple ones exist. Um, there's kind of just been uh, we'd like to keep that circulation history for, and kind of find history for the patrons. Um, so kind of deleting is not always the best option. Um, and then with regard to those accounts, you know, if you are switching um, something to be kind of aware of is the library to go information. Um, I see that Heidi's here as well, but um, as far as I know, and I don't have a whole lot of information with the library or overdrive people, but um, it's on a barcode by barcode basis. And if you want to get uh, to have your history uh, translated to the new account, you have to contact Heidi um, at that email address to make sure that the history comes over. Um, Currently checked out items are not going to be a problem um, because those will just expire on their own, but they will need to contact Heidi and give her the new barcode um, if they want the old information there as well. Okay, I did not have enough time to do this patron policy draft. Um, for duplicate patrons, I've been working on some other things right now, um, but I will do that for the Jan meeting. Okay. All right, so the main thing kind of, yeah, is just to go over these. Um, and if, has anyone had any questions come up regarding um, regarding the upgrade or any potential, I don't know, current issues with circulation that we're not talking about here? I know this is kind of just old information rehashed, but um, has anyone noticed anything or have anything that they'd like to talk about um, in the open forum? kind of section here. <clears throat> um, well, uh, I know at least regarding those, uh, the items coming in through Z3950, um, I'm going to be cleaning those up today. So you won't be seeing any more of the um, for example, if you do a search for the flat sign on a record um, that usually um, can come in. So if you just even just copy that and search for it in the catalog, those titles will be gone by the end of the day. Um, but I am keeping a tab of when those do show up uh, when they're imported. You can kind of see them here. Um, 
and I haven't noticed an uptick in records, which is good since the last few times I've checked. Um, but those will be gone, uh, at least from the 100, 245s, and the 500 fields. <clears throat> Um, yeah, there really isn't a whole lot more that I have to add to that, um, other than I'll be contacting Perry, um, working with those uh, transit policies. Um, yeah. That's really all I have. There wasn't a whole lot of time kind of <laughs> between. Um, and I guess, oh, has everyone been able to get their close dates set up? I know there were a few logins that were having issues with the close dates editor being grayed out. Um, that shouldn't be the case, but I know that's happened before. Brent, um, this is Darlene, and yes. no, I have not been able to do my um, close dates. <laughs> you haven't? Okay. All right. Well, I will. I try to do those in the updates, but I think um, you know, there's a close dates reminder in the last one. Um, I'll just send out a basic listserv reminder for that. Um, and this link is pretty good for how to do it. And there is also a um, YouTube video of setting up close dates using our staff client. Um, and I'll put that into the chat window as well. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. And so you were saying that was you, Darlene, that had mentioned you weren't able to. Right. It, our, where it says, you know, to edit the closed dates, mm -hmm. ours is not highlighted, so I can't even get into it. Okay. Um, yeah. If you can just, which login are you using, by the way? The Malheur County Administration, you know, the our administrative uh, one. We go through the administrative server thing. Okay, but the login you used for Evergreen to get yes. in. Yes. Yeah, the administration one. Yeah. Okay, I just I was just thinking of the barcode, but I can look at that after the meeting. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, definitely let me know. That's good to know, uh, Delia. Okay. And I need, on this creation of accounts policy for duplicate and multiple re accounts, the cards, having two cards. Yes. The reason that we give the call, two cards here on, is on trail is because people couldn't do the libraries to go. Okay. And at the college and also when Nissa and Bell didn't have uh, Leo and pay for libraries to go, they couldn't get in, so they would come and get cards here. Okay, that makes sense. Um yeah, I, Heidi would be the best to know, but I know that I could look at the the server configuration about what we're actually blocking out, but um, okay. I think most of the libraries do have access to library to go but um, with those duplicate accounts, it would, kind of more information is better than uh, less, at least, so if there are, like, uh, kind of a message field or an alert or something in their record that you could mention, that's why there are two, that really oh, helps. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, because I know Library to Go is a pretty important service um, for our pa <clears throat> excuse me for our patrons. Okay. Um, yep, I've been also aggregating uh, those weekly uh, notices, or sorry. Not notices. There have been some changes too. Um, let me bring it up here. <clears throat> some changes to the print notices. Um, there are other options for that. I know uh, some libraries had wanted customizations. Um, so now uh, you have the ability to have, man, you can have so many options. <laughs> uh, I think there's. Two day, three day, seven day, fourteen day, uh, nope, three, fourteen, twenty eight, sixty. Um, the only issue I've come into with people that wanted changes to their overdue notices, the print ones, is that once you have an item moved to lost, 
the print notice does not exactly, it won't um, generate past that date. So for example, if you're a library like Milton Freewater here, for example, uh, and you have your books go lost at 14 days, uh, the 21 day notice won't um, appear because the item information has changed. Um, so we might have to set something up separate if you want to see, for example, patrons that have uh, items that have been lost for X amount of time. Um, that would be a separate, uh, separate report to put in. But there are some more options. Um, and later this week, I'll be putting it in a uh, future update here to the listserv as well, but um, I'm going to be putting in some performance uh, enhancements on the application servers that should speed up the staff client a little bit. It's the hope it's worked on the test server. Um, so that will be coming in um, as well. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry there isn't a whole lot to talk about, I guess, on this meeting, but unless there's some other um, information that I can help uh, with right now, I think we might um, just kind of close this meeting a little early and get set up uh, and I can help everyone get set up with their close dates since those are pretty important. <clears throat> Okay. Well, uh, thank you everyone for coming. Sorry the meeting was so short, um, but I'll be releasing the minutes of this as well as um, kind of what we're going to be doing in the future meeting on the uh, 17th. Um, yeah, well, thank you so much for coming and uh, feel free to look at those system updates as well weekly for kind of a little more timely up-to-date information. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm also so sick. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, everyone, and I guess I'll see you online. And happy holidays, yes. <laughs>